This is the Fellowship of the Link on Wednesday, March 8th, 2023. And we're talking about a small project I have going to do shared notes across six tools with six different people. <clears throat> and Chris, you're one of my uh, hopeful volunteers for this project as well. Uh, and we're just uh, talking with Aram, who is very interested in this kind of interoperability. And it's kind of a low hurdle goal, which is to take a simple format like Markdown uh, and so I created the page that I'm sharing in the chat. And the idea is, can we connect through this? And then what does it mean to share notes? Um, and how might we improve that? So so the, the, the low bar that I set was, um, let everybody link to this page from their note-taking system and then make a change to the page by adding a link to their system on the page. And then either make a pull request, send me the edit, or, or in some other way, uh, cause that change to happen. Um, and that may be too low uh, a bar, or it may be confusing. I don't know. Thoughts? I think that's a, so I think that's a very good, uh, you know, bootstrapping uh, method. Uh, so building on, you know, Martin and Git uh, as the MVP, yes. Um, there's, and it can be extended in the direction of the interwiki linking or, inter, you know, uh, that we have discussed at some point. And I know, so uh, Timur Bounceco, who joined, I think, one of our calls only, uh, has been doing the interwiki links uh, in Mikorisa. I know MediaWiki has that. Maybe we can build on that. There are conventions. Um, my, my proposal, also building on that, or complementary to that, is you probably can see coming. <laughs> That we take the same repositories and also just put them uh, in an agora. Right. Uh, well, right. My, so my understanding is that your agora will wrap itself around anybody else's kind of repositories. And so yes. part of my question is, what does that mean and how does that play out? Because you just shared yeah. a link to, to, you just did that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, in general, like as long as you submit it, uh, as long as you submit like a repository to an agora, uh, uh, and of course, anagora.org is the reference one, but uh, we can set, uh, uh, yes, I think will be uh, maybe to uh, set up a, a particular agora for this experiment. So it's easier to like uh, play around and like uh, experiment with that. Um, once the repository, repository are in, uh, what the agora will do is like anytime you search for something, uh, it will volunteer every page that matches that something in some way that we can define uh, one after the other. And if you link using Wikilinks or hashtags, so anything you use, uh, any any Wikilink that you have in your local repository will by default link to every other page with, with that name. So essentially, uh, the, uh, the Agora optimistically promotes local links to uh, you know global namespace links. Uh, so in that sense, linking to uh, shared nodes across six tools in the Agora will not require linking to wiki, relay, dev, slash, share notes uh, across these tools. Uh, it will be uh, sufficient to say wiki link, so square bracket, square bracket, share notes across six tools. Uh, and that link will be, uh, you know, um, equivalent in, in the scope of the hour. Is that sort of like a meta backlink? How is that um, different from a backlink or and unfortunately, I wish I understood transclusion better, but I don't know where the, where the limits of uh, boundaries of transclusion are, but but how does that? Right. So uh, for, so essentially, uh, what what happens, I have actually a diagram. Perfect. Showing, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, I can, if you want, uh, show you uh, quickly. Um, so essentially, this is from my, um, yeah, this is a, a pre, the draft uh, for um, the uh, you program can kind of read this. Cool. It's probably better. Yeah, this is the that uh, the draft of what's going uh, into print apparently <laughs> in the um, uh, here we go in the personal knowledge um, graphs uh, book. I don't know if you can see this. Yes. Yeah. So essentially, uh, what happens in, uh, if you think about this, you know, um, so the Agora uh, introduced the notion of node, and node being like a nexus to some extent each of these uh, about something. So it, it, it can also be uh, thought as mapping to a search query. You search for something in an Agora, you are visiting that node, which may be empty, 
but you know, essentially that the results page is like the node uh, in our terms because it's a it's a graph, uh, or, or, or we try to see it's a graph. And uh, in each node, you have many resources, so it's like a multiplicity. So, for example, like if we all, if, if uh, you know, in, in Rel8, you have shared nodes across these tools, and I have like a, a like the same uh, page in Marlon, in uh, in my garden or in another repository, they will uh, the, the your page and like my page will be sub nodes, so different resources in the node um, uh, titled share nodes across these tools, right? And then uh, if in your wiki, for example, like I see in uh, Relate, uh, you have a link to tools for thinking, right? So uh, in this case, that will look in, uh, like this, right? Uh, in the sub node, um, is share nodes across six tools in your uh, in, in Relate wiki, you're linking to the node tools for thinking, right? In your um, garden or wiki. But the hour actually takes that and says, Okay, if there are any links between repository within a repository, I will actually build a link at the Agora level. Essentially, by linking something in your context, you're contributing that relation to like the higher level graph. And this is essentially the, the core way in which we build the graph. Any link at, at a lower level gets promoted to a higher level by default. So, th so it's so um, just trying to mirror what you're saying and see if I'm understanding it. So this is kind of like a smart query, like a standing query that will find the same text string in whatever yes. documents happen to mention that text string. Uh, it actually, it uh, by it could do that by default. It actually rather matches only the title of the documents. Oh, okay. So it's not looking into the text of the documents. Right. If you want to like uh, 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 to link. Uh, to my, uh, there is like a full text search, uh, but that's how it's different from from a, a a permalink or a backlink because the backlinks are actually text within the documents, and you're looking for the same. You're looking for right. people who, who've called something the same document. Exactly. Yes. I mean, a model or some things, right? Like uh, you can have uh, spaces or underscores or dashes. Uh, for the other, it's all the same. Yeah. It will it will match like do some fuzzy matching. Um, and the links uh, are built, you know, uh, precisely the back and forward links are only the actual links you you have in the resources. Got it. And are you looking for um, mistaken, accidentally similarly named documents also? I mean, you, yes, you're exactly. really looking for the same document that different people have riffed on, right? Exactly. Yes. So this is, for example, like the the, the reference library has uh, only about twenty six thousand uh, nodes. But like already, you can see that you know this is all just multiplicity that happened sometimes because as a community we say like oh let's node in this location sometimes just because of uh, serendipity uh, yep. and this is a, yeah so for example like you know um, uh, I guess uh, you know we have like fourteen in a way we have fourteen definitions of the failures because we have fourteen. Uh, resources that are, are titled precisely favors. But you don't have a way of showing whether some of those are like the edit of a comma versus a different riff on the definition. You're just listing them all, right? Right. Uh, yeah, exactly. Because uh, uh, to some extent, uh, these are all unrelated to each other. They're all like sort of like a, it's like a bag of things. Uh -huh. So there's no uh, notion right now of one is a version of the other. You could definitely have one like, you know, fork. Like a particular resource, right? But we have an Angular flow. Okay, and uh, uh, FedWiki sort of takes that approach. Is FedWiki is very much about versions of individual pages that then get shared by other people and cloned out. And I, I again, I still don't re don't understand the sort of the, the promiscuous right. replication of pages of FedWiki, but it's trying to follow on a on a page track. <clears throat> um, Chris, go ahead. Yes. So hopefully it can hear me at least. Yes, totally hear you. Like you're next door. Um, good. Uh, so I know I am not yet in the Agora officially with a, a repo, but I am in there with respect to being tracked by the bot through Google and through Mastodon. So I can communicate into the Agora that way. And that's one way communication. And other than the bot saying, here's the page and the link back to me, 
I get no other communication about anything else that happens within that space, which is good in some sense. I, you know, at least I'm notified, here's your thing, you can see the link and go. But if you tomorrow change something within that Agora, I, I get no notification, I don't know about it, unless I choose to go back, which notification wise is fine. Now, if I did have, or at least for the Twitter and Mastodon section, but if I did have my own page, I would love nothing more than to have notifications of when you or Jerry update your related pages for me to go see, oh, there is an area within the Agora I'm interested in. I want updates or notifications from changes. So when Friends of the Link page changes, I know something has happened. I should go look at it. Mm -hmm. is, is any of that infrastructure does it exist does it is it you know or is it even an opt-in like um or a pseudo opt-in like you know um web mentions let's say as an example thank you yeah i mean that's next yeah first uh you also exactly what exists now uh, pretty much so yeah right now the hour is very much like a fire and forget to some extent uh, and it tries it doesn't notify notify back we do want to add that as an option there's like some limited support in the sense that you you have rss feeds right so that you can yeah. subscribe to but it's a bit manual and there's also like a matrix channels it's sort of build on the rss feeds and they can they can be used to like uh watch for updates essentially but uh, but I, I think what you were I, I think the ideal flow would probably be something like watch node right uh, and then you get notifications uh, from anything you watch. We want to build that, but it doesn't exist. Probably. Okay. Yeah. Well, at least RSS is a start. I can I can live with that. Yeah. Uh, if I remember correctly, you have to just add RSS. Uh, actually, no. Uh, yeah. You, you need to add uh, as for the feed, like uh, action feed. So this average thing that you work. Yeah. There you go. Uh, something like this. There you go. Feed Chris Aldrich gives you the like a full feed for um, for the node Chris Aldrich, and this uh, applies to every every um, every node except for node all, which is like a hack, and just gives you a whole hour, and it's very costly. That's interesting. So each node has its own matrix yes. channel. Uh, no, not right now. No, no. Each node has its own RSS feed, and you can uh, we have a um... <laughs> what. Interesting. Uh, we have, uh, sorry, uh, we have um, a, like a, a few channels that watch different RSS feeds, but right now it's only RSS. Now, uh, you did hit on something, which is like, you know, each node does have what we call STOAs, which are just like spaces associated uh, with, the, with the node. So for example, like, you know, um, uh, we have a, a hash document, Etherpad, and a GC meet. Oh, I don't know if GC meet works. Yeah, okay. You can have like a video call. <laughs> In the, in the anyway, all the easy bits. It's just iframes, uh, but we wanted to add a, a precisely like a, a one matrix room per node because it would be ideal. Because the idea, the, the, the idea is like you know, explore how cheap it could be to have like one space, one unified space, uh, so that you know, like uh, the two things you need to collaborate with someone is first are you on an agora, and then you collaborate on things to some extent by default uh, in the namespace, and second any node in an hour you can say like photo we will work on fotl mm -hmm. and just with that just with that bit of information you have everything you need to like you know chat and so on now our the chat we do want to add it it doesn't exist but there's a thing called cactus comments uh like annotation with my matrix and another one which is somewhere in the hour which will be make it easy to create uh rooms per node yeah uh, so all these things uh, we prioritize according to interest. So if <laughs> if, uh, if you are interested in in, for example, like adding these, we will we will prioritize. <laughs> there you are again. Yes. Um, Aram, how does this fit your conception of interoperating and the stuff that you're working on? Uh yeah. I mean, I think I I always have thought that you know. At, Anagora is very cool. I think it's 
maybe a little overwhelming for what I uh, want to do. But we've had this conversation before, which is, you know, the whole point of this is we should each be able to use whichever tool we prefer. Uh, and I think that in terms of uh, an RSS feed, that's definitely a good way to start in terms of picking things up. Is there an RSS feed for new nodes as well? Right, that will be the feed for latest. I mean, okay, this so actually there is a more... feed here. I'm oh, sorry. Okay, so there is a feed for this page. Yes. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. And um, the, this is what uh, what we match uh, what's usually on Matrix. Um, it's also show up here. Right. Usually. So. Oh. oh, nice. Oh, that worked. I sort of didn't expect uh, images to work, but they did. Nice. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm going to try to draw that thing in Excalidraw and embed the drawing instead. But right. for, the, for the moment, it's just a scan. <clears throat> um, yes, and like uh, when it comes to like uh, as usual, like you know, like uh, also like uh, my time is like. It was drifting, <laughs> like I'm a meditation is drifting. But like, uh, if we set up like the uh, like a, an algorithm for the experiment, I'm happy to remove things. The algorithm is sort of like a kitchen sink approach right now. Mm -hmm. like the, the interface is a bit lower and so on. I'm happy to simplify and just deploy like a different uh, configuration. You know? Cool. Now, um, if we if we if we're Agora users, we should be able to go in and annotate those pages, but there will be no connectivity back to the original pages. In what cases and for what use what use cases do you have for us to actually step into the Agora and and edit or or create there, um, or is the Agora just kind of the meta web that connects our common interests? Right. So, so right now it's more like on the meta layer, and it's not. Uh, uh, does it, I mean we are we haven't been investing a lot in the flows that are actually ping back. So the uh, highly ideas there will be uh, you know embrace uh, indie web standards uh, for that. Uh, but essentially the idea will be to focus on uh, like enabling serendipity to some extent. So essentially uh, maybe uh, you know like uh, take these six repositories for example and uh, have like, you know, some basic tools here that allow us to like uh, find the overlaps. And maybe if, uh, they maybe have the hour to just say, you know, if, you know, uh, you, you we have these resources sort of in common in the same space in this node that we share, like, can we just like say, click through to like, you know, add them all to like a shared document and then work on that. So essentially like, uh, maybe depending on uh, depend on the weather ecosystem for like the actual uh, more collaboration in one resource. Um, how do you handle changes to the original pages? Like if I make an edit to one of the pages you've scanned here, is there any way you're going to scan it again to check or? Oh, yeah, yeah. If you make a change, it will be reflected in the hour within 30 seconds. Oh, wow. Yeah. I mean, uh, as long as nothing breaks. Uh, without you doing anything or the next time you yeah. visit that page in the hour? No, no, no. Uh, yes, it's automatic. The hour is always pull, uh, pulling in the background. Oh, so wait, you're pulling for changes on every page you've added to the Agra? Yes. Yeah, yeah, because it's, a, it's actually every repository. Git is quite efficient mm -hmm. because it's just a Git pool. Uh, that's okay. one of the advantages of, of the Git approach. Cool. Um, of course, it, it, it won't scale to like a million repositories right away, not at the, with that latency. But uh, I think it can go quite far, in particular for like the set of groups that are likely to try to collaborate. Uh, just because like you can apply heuristics for like you know how often repositories are updated and so on. Thank you. Um, no, no, thank you. Uh, so, other thoughts on this, or other riffs on what it means to share notes? And and a, a meta quite a, a side question. Should we leave Jitsi so that Chris has an easier time joining us properly and go to either Zoom or some other kind of tool? Because um, Chris, every time you have to fuss with uh, with getting in here, I want to save you that annoyance. Well, I, I will mention too that for some reason Zoom has weird quirks too, and I, I'm not sure 
Oh, Although that, that's weird. I, it takes less usually within like a minute or two it sorts itself out. So Jitsi it, for some reason like spends five minutes, ten minutes, fifteen minutes trying to find my microphone and my camera every time, regardless of if I'm using the local one or other attached ones or what OS are you on? Um uh lately it's been mostly my um uh, windows machine um so strange so is there is there any video conferencing uh, system that is clean for you where like you don't have this problem uh, i don't I don't worry about it. don't special case me it's some weird quirk that eventually i'll flush out today actually i rebooted everything and cleared all the cookies in the whole nine yards oh wow I, uh, in hopes that that would like do something and what's even weirder is i can't get it to work at all in firefox <coughs> okay so it's very strange it's bizarre. Um, oh, thank you but even zoom and meet have had issues and i'm not sure i don't think it's a hardware thing because i've tried three different microphones and two different you know cameras and I, you know, so I'm not sure exactly what it is that's <clears throat> that's very strange, and uh, including the the built-in webcam bezel cam. Yep. Yeah. Crap. Yeah. All of the above, I've, and I've even tried other computers too. And it, yeah, I don't know. Maybe you have a about. zone of video incompatibility about you somehow. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm almost to the point where I'm gonna switch out my. Um, my router and further hardware upstream to see what the issue is. So I don't know. So weird. Anyway, sorry to distract, but uh, back to the question at hand. Do we have any um, conventions beyond standard markdown we want to preserve yes. here? Great question. Um, uh, apparently, Flansian has thought of that. So, go. <laughs> yes, I mean this one. Uh, yeah, but uh, stop me. Uh, but uh, Joe, I'll take a minute. So, stop this me is before what I, I link again. Yes. So let me find this. Um, so essentially, okay. The way I yeah, I I uh, I, I focus this. Um, uh, this topic from the point of view of from bias, but I, I call this like a protocol level. So essentially, um, our protocol is uh, a set of conventions beyond precisely, uh, you know, the baseline uh, that in this case we are discussing will be that will be you know like Marlon uh, uh, on it. So um, to to some extent, uh, I the base pro our protocol is like whatever a community agrees. As a, as a as a set of conventions for collaboration, mm -hmm. or the lower the lower friction to collaboration. Uh, so essentially, uh, you know, it's a bit like cheating because you know, if you if you tell me you know, oh, this is what I would like to do in a group to collaborate, I would like I will like yeah, that's another protocol, right? It's just by definition uh, that. <laughs> uh, and like uh, in 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 practice, you know, so I think uh, the way I see it, it starts with like uh, the intent, you know. If you have an intent to collaborate, that's probably like uh, what you will do. Uh, and then more like, um, uh, more concretely, well, Wikilinks, uh, they are an extension to Markdown. Of course, like, uh, they are like a relatively common extension, so maybe uh, we consider them part of Markdown, maybe not. But actually, actually, because Wikilinks sort of like require defining how you are going to resolve them, because they are not like Anchor in Markdown. Uh, I think they are at uh, this layer of like uh, what I call our protocol. Uh, same for hashtags. And then I have this specific like uh, proposal for essentially this will be an, an extensible uh, protocol, a very simple extensible protocol where we can say when I write this, I mean this essentially uh, for a variety of things. So I, I propose like uh, in, in, in this text. Like a, a few uh, conventions that, uh, that are on top of this, which are like go, pull, and push, which I think we will discuss uh, 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 like uh, shortly in other cases, but sure, you know, surely again, go is a matter, matter, it's a way of saying 
in the context I'm writing in, which in the Agora case is the title of what you're writing. So for example, like a link in share notes across six tools. In that, if you write any external link, a URL within that document and you hashtag go it, you're saying, if you take any link here to be canonical for this, it's this one. It's like, a, exactly. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, and thank you for, um, uh, for asking that because the answer is a go link. <laughs> so go our yeah. chapter uh, in the Agora of Francia uh, will, uh, oh, this is broken, but well, sort of, will redirect to the document I'm presenting because the, this document has a, a go hashtag. Hmm. So essentially it's like a link redirect, uh, sort of like a short link, mm -hmm. but it, it lets you, it's an example, right? In the sense that it, the Agora doesn't require you to do anything except write hashtag go and it will parse intent. So the, it's a, sort of an example of how just by agreeing a convention and writing, you can sort of use like the Agora as a, uh, as a common line, uh, no matter where you write, right? You can really write in an obsidian and the Agora will still do this, right? Once your repository is there. And, and just surely pull Wait, is uh, yeah, Real quick, before we move on. So yes. the, is the Go intended to indicate the main link of the page so there should only be one go per page or is it saying these links are all important to the definition of this page right um so from the two i will choose a second because i'm not i'm not into like a, a you know one one way you know, things or like one voice and and in, in practice also because if you Want to do one go link and I want to do another. We need to decide because the Agora only tries to think about nodes and the node will include both our nodes. Uh, we need to decide which one gets redirected to. And to some extent, that's uh, the layer of governance and ranking. So the Agora it tries, it tries to be like a generic framework for deciding that, but right now uh, it, it doesn't say this is the one. Well, it does, but it does, but they, we, uh, we can change how it does. And and just thinking along the same lines, so what FedWiki tries to do with those little icons at the bottom that don't make sense to me is say, hey, here's a bunch of versions of that page. Um, it would be interesting to have a graph view of the history of the page, like here's who edited and what changes they made. That would be pretty cool. You know, here here is a fork. If, if if it were simple enough to visualize, hey, this person forked the page, made these changes, uh, and the, the fork is kind of permanent and seems to have its own life, then you could kind of follow that around, um, huh? And so and yeah. and then I mean, fork and pull is an attempt to rationalize this so that there winds up being one main line or main reliable page, canonical page, for each page you're expecting, I guess. Uh, in the Agora, no. Not the yet, Agora, no, I mean, I mean, fork and pull, I'm talking about GitHub specifically. Yes, yes. Uh, I think, uh, well, I mean, fork is, uh, fork and pull are uh, 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 forking and then uh, do, creating a pull request. So like uh, yes. trying to merge, they are at the uh, repository level. Um, uh, so they can apply to many pages, but yes. And when you're saying pull here in the Agora context, how different is that from? Yeah, it's different. So for example, like uh, um, this is transclusion, just as per like the Nelson essentially. So here's an example is, so I created a shared note across these tools um, as a note. So now, you know, like we have one by one node by relate and one node by uh, Flancia. Mm -hmm. And uh, and this was incorporated, you know, within, um, uh, yes. Uh, hey, Chris, but uh, I'm glad Whoa, you're here. Look. With Pixel, you know, eventually. <laughs> uh, so pull is just a request to embed. It could be called embed, it could be called, it could be called like a transclude, include. Um, but I call it pull because I went with pull and push just because I wanted to, I guess, simplify a bit. I don't know if it did, I did or not. I don't know. An experiment. Uh, also, full disclosure, 
I am in, I was inspired by like the you know the expanse. No, the sure. Expanse? The Where F like they are like you were trying to build an Epstein drive? <laughs> a what? An Epstein drive. <laughs> right. I mean this is for the internet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But like, yeah, uh, you know, this interface they have, they have, they have the floating uh, holograms graphs and they're like grabbing things and like throwing them. And so essentially I was, uh, uh, what, um, uh, uh, this will make sense in a, in a, in a minute, I think. Uh, so when you pull something, the other will say, after showing whatever is in the, um, uh, in the node, I will show that as well. So because, you know, because I said pull fellowship the link uh, the Agora will include fellowship of the link in the same context. Uh, so uh, if you think about a graph where you have like, you know, shared nodes across six tools and fellowship of the link, this one is pulling this one. So it will essentially be closer to, it, it's, it's trying to reduce the distance. So this is where like I went with pull and push as sort of like physical uh, metaphors. Uh, the only way that I mean the, the way that it confuses me a little bit is in contrast to fork and pull, which is a, yes. entirely a different pull. Uh, I didn't think of that. Uh, um, so maybe it, it can be changed. We can have synonyms. Well, uh, par um, partly I'm thinking of like collaboration protocols, right? And 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 when I'm describing that to, uh, to newbies, I'm like, well, there's one way you can do it is you know mm -hmm. live live interaction, and then you need things like uh, CRDT or whatever else. Another way is to fork and pull. And that's how this works. And so you're, you're right. describing a, a, a different operation here. Yes, yes. Uh, so I think it's, uh, it's an interesting, I mean, it's an interesting uh, point. Uh, I guess I, I, would, I would think of fork and merge. Yeah. I guess by, I don't think by, pull as well. by pull here, do you mean sort of follow? It's, uh, it's more like pull the resources there into this, into this bucket, essentially. Or, yeah, or include. Like, uh, yeah. It's include. It's, it's include. An, uh, this an include is, statement. Yeah, this is literally an iframe. Mm -hmm. just... I'll, I'll mention that when approaching the Agora for the first time, coming up and understanding those definitions of push and pull, or even Go pages, if you've never seen Go pages before, yeah, those technical pieces are one of the biggest hurdles to understanding what's going on what is this tool doing yeah, yeah or yeah. you know even words like transclude unless you're maybe in a group like this or at a certain technical level a lot of people won't understand what that means or what those technical words mean unless you define them specifically on page one mm -hmm. which may not be a bad way to go completely yeah no Quick question. You said a Go page. Do these also create the Go directive creates a page as well? Or you uh, just made a page with a bunch of Go links on it. I think you, uh, I think Chris meant the latter, probably. Yeah, uh, no, Go page is probably the wrong word. Go link is probably Go link, yeah, yeah. more standard, okay. I think. Yeah, Go link is, yeah, Go links are unused. Uh, but essentially, uh, that is a preview. Yeah, it's a lot of jargon. I, I've, I've, I've got them, you know, it is a bit obscure. To some extent, this is like a bare bones. I call it, okay, this is the cop out, I guess. <laughs> but like, uh, I call it like a bare bones bootstrap. I, uh, you know, like, the, for example, like, I don't know if it comes across quickly. My strength is not like visual design or programming, even, <laughs> probably like, you know, so it's put together. But yeah, I completely agree. And pull and push are maybe a bit more idiosyncratic than they could have been. So I sometimes uh, look back and think maybe. Well, and the other issue too is knowing how reliant parts of the Agora are on things like GitHub, which has a very clear cut push and pull kind of idea there, which doesn't completely overlap, makes the semantic part even that much harder. Yeah, that's completely true. Yeah, yeah. So maybe maybe that's something that we could change. I mean, if they are, uh, I think they, I, they are the synonyms for a few things. Go has synonyms. So it, it, it doesn't extend which words to use for transclude and for what push does, which uh, uh, because in a minute, uh, that, that can be part of the hour definition, essentially. I see it. It's part of the hour protocol. Yeah. Um, but yes, thank you for the feedback because that, that uh, helps a lot. And, and push is like publishing at a distance. Mm -hmm. 
So if you, it's, it's like, it, it is sort of like, but it's not, you know, this is like, it can be refined. But essentially, this is this is uh, more like uh, this, this is probably more like a uh, when you do it push it in the sense that you you are publishing somewhere. Yeah. Uh, so so for example, if you wanted to trans transclude something in share notes across six tools, you could say push share notes across across six tools, and whatever you pass will just show up there uh, um, um, remotely. Will show up where? We'll show up in the in the Agora, for example, like uh, do we have an example here? Yes. Uh, so, for example, you know, if I here I wrote, uh, I do this a lot for writing in the journal. So, no matter where you are in an Agora in, in, in your system, you can say I'm writing something in my journal, for example, or like in any in, in place, and you are like, oh, this is also relevant in these other places. So, you know, usually I will be like, oh, I write it here and then I need to go and like transclude or like use block references in Rome or something. And it will push, you just say like push there and you just forget about it. Essentially, it's like you wrote in more than one place at once. Um, which would not, which might also be achieved with a hashtag. Uh, it can be done. Yes, you can say hashtag push. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. But I mean, hashtags are a way of connecting things across different spaces too. Well, to more right. You are by saying hashtag, you are being linked. Right. You are being linked in the hashtag. Right. Yeah. Okay. It's it, it, right. I can't. I can't all that. Yes. It, it's a. It's like registering what you're writing at the distance. Yes. It's right. like a a strong link. Right. Uh, in so, that sense, pull and push are similar. Yes. So does push push the current node? And the intent and the directive node to the the tar or it pushes the current node to the target. So push A written in note B will include note B as a node on A. Uh, if you push, uh, let me actually see if I uh, have a better example. If you push a uh, Say uh, you're writing in node A and you push to node B. What you put under, uh, uh, there's two ways. <laughs> what you put under the push, like for example, in this case, uh, oh, sorry, I'm not, I'm not showing this. Uh, here you have push Peter Alexander in this node, which is actually 20, 22, or 3, 24. If you say push to Peter Alexander, anything that is indented under, so like a children, in like an outline, mm -hmm. that, that is what gets pushed. Uh, if there's nothing, uh, and is that uh, now visible it, from the node, Christopher Alexander? Right. So yeah, this is in Christopher, no, no Christopher Alexander. Okay. So what did we just push there? Harmony seeking computations. So they're pushed, the the which which means they show up below as a link, as right. a, attached as an yes. appendage. Exactly. It's sort of like a publishing. Uh, it's like a like a feed. Right. So it's yeah, not can, it's, uh, it's not changing the the original page. It's just appending this note right. from someplace, someplace, someplace else. Right, right. The idea being that if you want to change it, because this is to some extent because, you know, I was a bit frustrated personally with uh, block references, right? Mm -hmm. uh, as, uh, you know, use in uh, Rome and to some extent Obsidian now, I guess. All Obsidian does something different, like anchors, these programmatic anchors. Because the issue, of course, if, if you have your references and we have another, uh, another garden elsewhere, we will need to synchronize the references using like a common like scheme, like a database actually, a scheme is not enough. But if we, uh, so this is a way of doing transclusion without having to depend on a central registry, essentially, right? Uh, so uh, the uh, limitation is that by default, you won't change the target, right? It will appear as a separate resource. Now, a way you, uh, you uh, the, the, the one thing that is not implemented by the plan is if you are in Christopher Alexander, so imagine like, you know, here all the pushes are done by me. You know, I uh, imagine you push to Christopher Alexander and I and it shows up as a separate sub node, like a blog, but it is relevant to a, a shared resource. I could be go to a resource and, and actually pull or catch, I don't know, and say whatever is coming from there, inserted here. So essentially, like a, a way of uh, it's like getting a pull quote, right? Uh, it, so you know, there's things we could we could play around uh, for this. 
I mean, like all of these things under uh, Agora protocol, they are sort of like uh, experimental. Like, I don't know, I find them useful. I use GoLinks a lot, also here in the corporation. I use pull and push a lot, but essentially I, I just dream this up. I mean, of course, transclusion is like a typical, but you know, um, if we agree on any other ways of saying like, you know, when I write this action, this is what I would love to happen. Uh, you know, our protocol just gives like a framework so we can um, uh, make this happen, essentially. Uh, explaining it as a block reference without the central registry is probably the most helpful definition I have heard because it takes something I know what it's doing and in my right. in my own local system it generates some random hash to give me that block reference but then when I start playing with 30 other people you can't guarantee it's not going to collide and exactly. so that so that makes sense to me or it makes much more sense in the shared space mm -hmm. um, um, thank you that, uh, thank you that means a lot so use, yeah. use that definition as a means of explaining it may or at yes. least be helpful for a subset of people yeah thanks so much i i did this uh in yeah i think i had it um I, i'm i'm very enamored of this distinction between competitive and complementary cognitive artifacts is the kind of thing where like the definition itself is a cognitive artifact to me it seems <laughs> it's like a meta artifact because once i learned about the definition i, I started seeing it everywhere i guess you know and like, I guess I like that these are readable, you know, it's like push to for Alexander. Well, yeah, you know, you could, you could, you can take a, a repository with such a push and say like, I'm going to have a node for Alexander. And I know this going to, it's going to interact with this in, in this particular way. I don't know. Let's see. Shoot. My, my link to the complementary and, cog and competitive broke. Oh. So I had, I had a doc that with that name, but the link no longer. I am interface. Right. It is now broken. So yeah, I I, I changed the reference because I, I heard this about this in a podcast with Sam Harris uh, with uh, oh, uh, the Yeah, I think I just found a new one, Joseph Lawrence. There yeah. We go. Yeah, it took me a while to find a new reference, but I find it uh, quite. Um, uh, useful, yeah. Hmm. Um, Aram or Chris, uh, I'm really interested in what note sharing means from your perspective with your systems, also. And then, and then, sort of full circle after either of you, um, I'd like to then see what that does in the Agora because I'm. I think that'll clear up in my head a bit what the Agora is doing to weave together sort of these different nuggets of, of content in different ways. Um, my side, well, on my side, probably the easiest is to have a, probably a subsection of a, a markdown text notebook in whatever form I'm going to use that in, because I have several um and then so i i have a couple different repositories most of my digital notes originate usually from hypothesis and then flow into either a markdown setup that's a private github repo that syncs with obsidian and then I have a separate flow that goes into my personal website that, that publishes it privately and only I can see it and search it, but I can always flip a switch and turn it on and make it public. So it's readable and shareable. And I have infrastructure there that does, you know, it's, it's all HTML obviously, but there's also infrastructure for, um, sending and receiving web mentions to communicate with other sites that support that as well as syndicating out to social media 
with a link back to, you know, a permanent resource. And I haven't set some of that stuff up on the like the obsi the obsidian like or GitHub repo set up. Um, although I've done that in the past with um, Tiddly with you, but I generally have not done that. So I'm trying and what I'm trying to not do is be invested in 15 tools and have everything separate so that I have to maintain multiple kind of databases for it, which is just insane. Um, so I think for this, probably the best thing to do is to hook it into that GitHub repository, um, which is ever so slowly becoming, I, I'm probably going to switch it actually and just make one that's a public that can draw from things so that I can have a separation between the public and private notes that have I've had intermingled for so long. Um, and you've been, you've been trying to do that in Obsidian with nested vaults or something like that, if memory serves? Well, yeah, it's, and right now it's split into two things, so there are nested vaults, and eventually I can just flip a switch and say, here you go, it's part of the Agora now, and have it make some sense. Right now it's just such a hodgepodge of crazy that it doesn't make sense. But I also have to just switch some of the workflows on the back end so that new things flow into the right spots. Um, so let, let me let me see if I'm understanding some of this. So it would be trivial for you to look at the page I shared in the Relate Wiki and use Hypothesis to make a comment or annotate the page. And I didn't realize how much you're generating original content in Hypothesis over there and then sort of sinking back into your own infrastructure. That's really interesting. I hadn't, I hadn't sort of pictured or imagined it that way at all. Um, and, and, but there's, but is there a link for you from a comment on Hypothesis to actually just trying to edit and do like a fork and pull to a page that's available for fork and pull kind of cooperation? Um, not really. I could probably do that with their API um but i'm not sure how worthwhile that would be in the long run to yeah. to do and and support that type of infrastructure that's not you know my native code mm -hmm. um but if i can talk hypothesis into it that's a whole nother ball of wax right or if someone wanted to dovetail with either their api or pull things in even through rss you could do that as well um, I, you know, and I've tried in the past to try and get hypothesis and i one of the other issues too, is chunks of hypothesis infrastructure, even with relation to the web, a lot of their stuff is JavaScript didn't read territory and not, you know, raw, readable, parsable HTML, um, which is a whole nother, you know, which is a, a similar problem to some of the things I was having with um, TiddlyWiki as a JavaScript resource. Mm -hmm. There, you know, there are things, there are useful things that happen, but so much of it is JavaScript that isn't parsable HTML it's you know it's just annoying and it so as a, and as a result it doesn't play nice with all the other html things um so but but it's re reasonably easy for me to have a resource that sits on github and is interactable i think mm -hmm. is raw html with other things that can consume it that way or json or whatever whatever the other thing is Cool. Um, and do you have this diagrammed out any place? Have you written this out to explain to anyone else? Uh, not fully and not in a long time. Okay. Um, Although a lot of it's now stable enough and streamlined enough that there's only, you know, three moving pieces anymore or maybe four. And anytime I get a chance to have fewer moving pieces, the better. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So maybe I should draw it out at, at this point. 
It's interesting. I mean, all these things are hard to picture unless you sort of know what the code is doing in different ways, right? Yeah. And it's a little, it's a little bit like understanding how the web works in order to help somebody troubleshoot what might be broken because they can't see a web page. It's like, oh, okay, you're not getting this, which means the problem lies over here in the stream, not over here. And and for what we're talking about here, from Agora to your own system, uh, to my own sort of imaginations of how these things work, they, they don't all they don't all fit neatly and elegantly. Well, and the, the other thing I tend to do for the last five or six years is I try to invest in things that have the easiest to use user interface and that are kind of broadly standardized. So if you're using something like sim simple like Markdown or HTML, I can buy into that a whole lot easier particularly if your Markdown flavor is super plain vanilla and doesn't cause issues because there's 5,000 flavors of it. Um, and there, you know, there are fewer flavors of HTML, which generally tend to be more backwards compatible. Um, but things like hypothesis, you know, to have a one button I can click and start writing and it saves it somewhere that I can do something with it that kind of ui to me is stupidly easy and it's easy to see it's got permalinks and i can point you at things mm -hmm. that immediately take you to that page and show you my notes but then also give me access to that data in a centralized repository that i can play with and change and do things with so, so does Google Docs fail because of its document format? Because otherwise, it's it's a way. Considering all the work we're doing here to sort of scratch our backs by reaching over to the the you know Rube Goldberg device across the room, sort of. Um, Google Docs has it all beat by absolute simplicity of multi multi party editing and and so on and so forth. It's just that it's in a proprietary format on a proprietary platform. Is, yeah, is which is also kind of a, a no, you know. Not a big, I'm not a big fan of that. Somebody else owning my data. Yeah. And, you know, so even in the last, you know, a month ago for reasons that are still beyond me and I can't figure out why or what Instagram turned my account off and locked me out and said, you just can't play here anymore. I, fortunately, I've got all of the data I ever gave to them backed up and on my own space. Wow. But suddenly every connection I ever had with anybody on Instagram is now totally lost. You know, five people have called me and like, did you, and they know I have an anti silo bent. They're like, you know, did you just turn your account off? They've called or emailed like, what, where's your stuff? I'm like, well, it's all on my website so you can find it. But they're irked, you know, they think I just disappeared from the planet because that was the only link I had with them. So weird. Um, Some, someone's busy trying to do identity theft like, yeah, no, for me on Insta. They just pulled, literally, yeah, wow. they just, they pulled the rug out from underneath me and turned it off and I'm just stuck. And do you write on that? I have is... appealed and... Uh, Maybe uh, if I, you no, write I'm, it, I'm you trying to gain it. I'm trying to gain enough distance from it hmm. and I've jumped they've done this to me twice and I've jumped through the hoops and regained the account. Wow. But this time they don't seem to be responding at all. And I've been trying to go through enough, have enough distance from it that I, it's not that I just see pure red. And I, I would be even more irked and upset if it were the case that all my data just suddenly disappeared with it. But I, at least I kept it and backed it up. So I'm not, That's great. I'm not as pissed as I would be otherwise. But, yeah. you know, it's like, I, and, I, yeah, and I just, I don't have the time to deal with it right now. Even to write it up. I mean, sorry, I, now I'm seeing red. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, it, it's like it, because it, it's, they call them friends. It's like you build these relationships and then they are like, no, you don't have those, those relations anymore. Some people, it will be very hard to reconnect with. Yeah. And, I, I, you know, if I was doing something crazy or bizarre or using, yeah. had I been using that account for spam or some other weird, insane thing or, you know, it's, and it's not even like they have an API that I would have been hitting 
-hmm. and butting up against doing something nefarious like you know uh, what the hell did you and they they won't say why they cut me off what happened what they think i was doing like not you know it, you know and it's all, all automated the interactions i can have with them so i can say here's a photo of me with your custom number as a selfie that i've uploaded to prove i'm an actual human being which i've done multiple times and still they turned it off and just said no and i'm like okay I, i'll move on so i if, those types of things drive me bonkers mm -hmm. and for that reason i don't really am not super keen on buying into a google platform although my guess is they're much more permissive in terms of what i could and yeah. should do with it um yeah no, i i understand uh, that i th i think like you know aspiring at first like you know i do have like very limited access to docs people yeah, yeah. We're in the same world world. so i i i will i haven't done it as of, as of late but i will uh, pursue to see if we can uh, if any chance we will interrupt uh you know like a, a lot open standard for annotation for example and so on and there's some work for uh, we are annotations in Chrome. I know that was presented in, in Iano 2021. But anyway, uh, I can I can really pursue that. But also, yes, maybe we can find something as simple as as to use as, as docs with comments. Yeah. Um, I think maybe uh, Etherpad has a uh, comment uh, or this route, you know, like a, one of those works. Maybe has like a, an extension for comments flows. Maybe that. Well, even things like, um, you know, they hypothesis and a few other related groups went through a W3C process and created a, a standard for annotations. Yeah. But to my knowledge, hypothesis is the only extant implementation of it, which is um, essentially standard by fiat. I think also World Rain uses web annotations, no? Um, who, you know, uh, Mimix, Mimix will rain. Yeah, that may be, but I, yeah. I've only ever seen the one implementation talked about yeah. or as an open source version. Yeah, yeah, completely. And I, I think there's so much potential there. Who have like, who are running the, an open source version from Hypothesis, but there's not a lot of continuing yeah. work on improving or changing or doing x y or z with it so it you know it's 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 a standard and it's there if you want to use it but right. you know there's no evolution or you know active work going on generally for it i think we can it would be nice to pursue that forward for sure there's a lot of interest i think uh, i know like you know I, I spoke about this with dan like more than a year ago, but like, you know, they're very really focused on academia and like I'm making a hypothesis work. But I think he's very interested in general uh, in pursuing that eventually. I don't know. And I, I, he has all the contacts in like uh, the, the W3C. So maybe we could <laughs> experiment with like uh, some flows related to annotations and report back. Yeah. yeah. Federating or even Or even making what we're doing here and I don't think there's been any talk or movement for, you know, that most of the groups I've known that were doing this kind of work have shut down. So things like, you know, the social web working group, I think was open for about five years and created a lot of the indie web building blocks and things like some of the standards for activity pub for uh, Mastodon, but a lot of that work has now since they've closed the group and it ceased and they had, they were successful in kind of trying multiple routes and avenues. Um, but I don't think, you know, it would be interesting to see a W C three group doing this type of work on either basic text and or HTML kind of coming out and people working on that sort of, you know, and, and maybe that's, maybe that's us. We're already doing it. 
Um, maybe we'll do it this year. Uh, yeah. So I had to step away. That was my bank calling because I just set up a bank account for Rel8, and they were having trouble convincing their back office what Rel8 does. So I had to kind of like explain a little bit more. Oh, I can cool. imagine. It was very funny. Um, um, we're going to run out of time soon. Aram, I'm, I'm curious what this what sharing notes looks like from your end. Yeah, uh, yeah. Hold on a sec. I'm just adding the. Uh information here about the web annotations. Cool. Um, yeah, so I think that there's a lot of, uh, here it is. There's a lot of interesting stuff here that I'm just trying to think my way through. Um, what I'm going to do, here we go. Let's put useful specs on. What I'm going to do, what I need, what I've been working my way towards and sort of recording information and notes from here on um, is, right, how to publish my notebook, essentially, mm -hmm. um, and then be able to make it interoperable with the rest of the notebooks, right? Because I'm not coming into this with a particular system. Um, I have a different set of like priorities um, than of some of you, which is like we talked about is fine, right? My interest here is I don't want to have a server. Um, I want to build this static. I think that's important for like making things last longer. Um, and I have a pre-existing notebook that doesn't have necessarily quite the depth of practice. Um, that some of you has, which allows me to be a little more flexible. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think essentially this means I now have sort of a requirement list and a set of directives that I need a parser to be able to understand um, that allows me to create pages in a way similar to how other people are creating them, as well as be able to read pages from your systems in a way that they will then operate similarly. Um, so I just published a, it into a blank repo here um, with the idea of uh, sort of what my conventions are, how I understood the conventions we've discussed here, and uh, how they can operate together. Uh, the main thing I think that is going to be there is the sort of YAML stuff is stuff I already use because I heavily use YAML. The folder structure is stuff I already use. The meta statements, I started with stuff that I already used, but also added sort of some adaptive things from what we've talked about. And the conventions are pretty much all coming from Flancian's uh, conventions um, as stuff that I want to be able to support. And then some notes about other things that I may want to link in. Um, and so I think this gives me a set of tooling that I can understand and build out with. Um, I have a bunch of pre-built tools for this um, built when I was building Contact Center. Um, yeah, I just pulled that directly from your page, the calendar one. <laughs> I was just looking at Angora stuff and, and pulling, or sorry, Agora stuff and pulling it in. Um, so that is, um, yeah, I guess what, so go calendar node, what, what is that going to do? Is yeah, that like so the URL structure? Right, no, it, it, right, right. So the yeah, I want to just try to when you pass like a serial like with something you think with slashes, it will try to compose. So if you say go calendar and node, it will see, see if they find a calendar link and it will relate to that one in node. Okay. Yeah. Um. So like it'll go find the URL that's the calendar URL. Yeah. And forward you to it. Yeah. For any, for any hashtag they use. 
Okay. Uh, let mm -hmm. me make a note of that because that was not clear to me. So. Yeah, no, I didn't mention uh, it earlier. Okay. Uh, yeah, this is like a composite goal. Oh. So Go has superpowers depending on what arguments you pass it, I guess. Right, right. Yes. And it, it will generalize, right? So the idea being that you, you pass certain nodes, it will try to like find one in the other or one in the other, or the other in one. They try to like uh, promiscuously uh, find something to do. Is okay. um, is the Go link so central to Agora that the G O in Agora is there a reference to Go? Ah, good question. No, not really. Yeah, yeah. Damn Go it! Links, I thought I was onto <laughs> something there. But you know what? We might what uh, uh, back uh, Red Redcon, <laughs> right? Yeah. I go like, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> so, like, this is good because what it means is that one. I now have rules for essentially building tooling that pulls the notes that are marked as public from my private notebook into a public repo. That's one. And two is I now have tooling with clear rules that I can establish. I use markdown dash it as my markdown parser. That's a node markdown parser. Um, and I can build these rules in, right? Like now I know if there's a particular hash like go, I can start saying if it starts with go, then between hash go and the end of the line, there's certain rules I can build out. Um, and if you're curious, I have information here. Let's see. Um, I'll put this into the link. I did a retro on my use of Markdown it for my dev blog, um, explaining how it works and what I'm using it for and why I ended up deciding after sort of struggling with it that I do want to keep using it. Um, so now I have rules that I can turn into plugins and I can build those plugins into Markdown it. And then I can publish those plugins and use them across multiple projects and other people could theoretically use them. Um, and that allows me to now establish here are my rules. Here's the program or the functionality that derives from those rules. Um, and here's how I can build them. So I have I have a product description and I have the next steps. And I now have some idea of what I want to build for my notebook publishing tool. Um, so th this is useful to me in that sense. And I think the, the sort of last question that is I don't think we necessarily have answered is sort of where, um, how we create the matched links. I think Agora has a clear way to uh, to do it, which is, um, right, it's just you're going to list sources and then pull those source matched nodes in from those sources. Okay. So I think um, that can go into my interlinked section. And we could say... Um, Establish list of sources and uh, where those sources have URL slash matched path. Um, path. Pull that source in as a link or potentially a node for the matched path on my own site. Um, I guess that leads me to one last question then. Does this therefore assume we have a flat structure? Right? Because if we're matching based on paths, then we either need to have a flat structure. So we all know that URL slash path is where we can find what we're looking for. Mm -hmm. Or we need to have some way to say, here's the set of folders that you can hop to and check for matched paths there. Right. Yeah, I think, I, I personally don't know what the right answer. I think it may depend on the work group. It may be part of the protocol, whether, because they, there's pros and, it's a trade-off, no? It, it, what the Agora does do is like, instead of, uh, it, it, you, so you have like a foo as a node link, 
And you can also have like a rail eight full, for example. So a user like a, a user like so uh, like a syntax where that means full only according to rail eight, uh, which is not the same as a path because it's not really a path. It's more like a selector, right? So it, it doesn't mean, but essentially it maps to resources under the path, uh, you know, match uh, where that. Um, source actually is deployed um, and is it your convention that it's always at relay uh yes that's a convention we use essentially it's like just like add as a user it just means re uh, the the repository target so if you check out the sources yaml uh, yeah anything that is under garden uh, is the username so forgive the programming ignorance this is a little bit like content addressability in the sense of if we could ignore the URLs or the permalinks, then we would be finding stuff because we, we know how to mention it. And then I was I was getting the impression that Go links were meant to be a kind of inoculation yes. from URLs in yes. the sense we're talking about. Um, but I don't understand enough what it's doing under the hood. Um, yeah, this is the intention, yes. And, and, and then I'm trying to do the simplest thing that could possibly work in this little demo of sharing notes. So I'm like, if we just use a permalink as the place to meet, then awesome. Uh, and the question is, to what extent can we just read, uh, read and edit, read and pull request, or, or in some other way collaborate through this node? 